So, went to Savers. Looked at some things. Didn't really pick up anything from this section. All the knickknacks, all the figurines. Uh, ooh, what was that? Yeah, so I continued on the aisles, but then it started to get um, crowded. So, moving on. Here, a sparse selection on the jewelry wall, but I did find a few things, and uh, they will be shown soon. Next up, glassware, hard goods. Looked at a few things here. The vases. I like the Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> more glassware, more pottery. Some figurines, some pictures. Some baskets. Here we have some dinnerware, dish, dishes, and... Yep, that's where all the people come in. Got crowded. So let's start. So as you can see, the jewelry selection on the wall was pretty sparse, but I did get to find a few pieces, and here they are on this tray. So let's go over it. First piece I found was this panel necklace. I love the chain. It's like a Spiga wheat style chain. Even has a very nice ornate bead at the end. There is a hook. These panels all have this very nice texture to them and uh, it is articulating. And when I measure it, Fully extended, it's about seven and a half inches in drop. So that's about a 15 inch necklace. So this is more of a choker. I tried it on and yeah, it, it fits. And um, it looks really sweet. So here you can see the texture and it does uh, have some weight to it. There's the back side. I couldn't find a maker's mark. And there's the chain. Really uh, in very good condition. And here we have the first piece. The next one, multi-strand seed bead necklace. It has a lobster claw. It's gathered here and then it drapes down into a layered. I just like this, it's beautiful. This has a um, hmm, 13 and a half inch drop, I believe, or 13 inches. And there is an extender, and that extender is about two inches long. So we have this really soft, smooth seat bead necklace. And it's funny, I noticed one little pink seed bead right there so we have this i'm making a mess ain't i <laughs> there you go the next necklace triple strands let's see it measures about eight inches to the shortest strand Ten and a half inches to the longest. Silver tone chain. The extender is about two and a half inches long. There is a lobster claw. And look at this. You have these beads. 
Now these clear faceted ones are glass and these with the uh, uh, opalescent, look at that. You see how, wow, these are glass too. And then there are silver tone bead spacers. It's just mesmerizing. I saw this from afar and I, and I said, this is really pretty. So there's some, is that pink? Yeah, these beads have a pink tinge to them. So we have this one. Let's see. That's how it's finished off. No makers mark at all. The extender has a little bead on the end. It's just gorgeous. So we have that. This necklace is by Loft. It is in really nice condition. There is a double silver tone chain. These two loops and it's holding two strands. The first being a faceted glass bead. They kind of remind me of disco balls. And the longer strand is made up of silver tone links and faux tortoise shell links. Very sweet. I do like this one. Let's measure uh, the drop on it. So without the extender, it measures in at about, oh, almost nine inches, give or take, to the glass bead strand. But you do have, you do have an extender. So we have this one by Loft, and here you can see it close up. This is in great condition. Next up, uh, multi-strand, multicolor seed beads, multicolor dyed shell pieces. This has an eight inch drop. The extender is really long. That's about four inches. There are these ornate bead caps on the top and this elongated lobster claw which I do see some wear on. So uh, I just like the colors, the components. I do notice a piece of um, filament sticking out right there. So maybe that needs to be trimmed, I don't know. But here is how it's finished off. Here is the lobster claw that I said had some wear. As you can see, there's a few spots of copper peeking through. But overall, I really like the colors and um, the components as well. And um, it's just... Uh, very cheerful to me. So we have this. Next up, I found uh, this pair of hook earrings, drop earrings, and they measure from the top of the ear wire to the longest strand, almost three and a half inches long. Uh, they have a gold tone ear wire falling down to the silver tone cone that's holding these two tassels that is made up, a, made up of a silver tone Rolo chain. And then it's holding these two glass beads. And the color of these beads remind me of Dragon's Breath. And I think they're just so sweet.
and they look to be brand new and they look to be artisan made so multicolor metals but beautiful glass beads it's i guess it's hard to see when they're lying down so here this necklace is acrylic and it's made up of all these different um strands consisting of clusters and there's also prong set rhinestones on each strand look at the chain that is a really unique chain that has like a um like one-sided loop kind of like a scalloped chain design uh this has an eight and a half inch drop and a three inch extender the jewelry tag says natasha now natasha is actually natasha accessories limited and they were founded in 2006 here in manhattan in new york city in the fashion district it's a wholesale distributor distributor of women's and children's and infants clothing and accessories but they also have a couture line uh for women that they um that is available at dillard's and nordstrom and i think uh jc penny so let's look at this close up it is gold tone here is the jewelry tag here's that chain there's a lobster claw clasp that chain is super unique and here is the necklace so like i said each strand is made up of these faceted teardrops as well as prong set rhinestones so i think it's really fun dangly beautiness <laughs> there there you can see it better and i love the color how would you describe this color very muted blue i guess opaque really sweet and the chain is very unique so that was it for the jewelry. Then I moved on to this aisle and this one had, hmm, serving trays? What is that? I see butterflies. And then uh, looking around, there were platters, tin containers, office supplies, picture frames, more picture frames. Yep, picture frames. Then handbags. Yes, a lot of nice handbags, I have to admit. So let's see what I got. Okay, let's uh, look at the bags I found. So the first one here, this is a um, Montana West crossbody bag here it's in like a slate blue color i guess the strap looks to be in nice condition and it is adjustable yeah let's look at the bag really nice embroidery you have the silver tone studs you have feet on the bottom. Oh, you have this scratch on one corner. But the other corners look good. Now let's look at the other side. There you see the plate, Montana West with the horsey. Here you have a slot. And you know, they are known to have a concealed carry section. So who knows, maybe this could be one. Um, I noticed uh, their bags, 
do have that feature, but I'm, I'm not sure if every bag has that feature. They're, very, they're based in Dallas, Texas. It's a wholesale company, and they basically make um, cowgirl leather purses and Western style purses, along with um, clothes and, and boots. So here we have this outside pocket, zippered pocket, big Montana West zipper uh, pull. There's the inside to this and it looks pretty good. You have that nice trim that is the same color as the strap. Now let's take a look at the inside. There's the inside. It is a zippered top and there is the, okay, there's a little bit of wear right there. Um, let's look at the, this. Okay. There you have a zippered pocket. So let me make sure that zips and it does. And inside you can see the Montana West patch. And here you have two slip pockets on the other side. I couldn't even take this out. Let's do that. <laughs> Here you see the lining with their signature Montana West. And uh, it looks to be in good condition. I don't see any rips. I don't see any holes. Yeah. Okay, so we can just Throw that back in. Now let's take a closer look at the sides. Okay, I see a flaw right here. Do you see this? The edge coat on here is, that can be trimmed off right there. Uh, other than that, see, the edge coat continues around here and it looks to be okay. Uh, there's a little loose thread over here. Let's look at the other side. Um, and the edge coating here looks to be right here. Peeling off too. So that needs to be trimmed. But other than that, um, and this scratch. I think this bag is really sweet. I mean, look at all the work it went uh, that went into this. So we have this bag by Montana West. Next up, I found this beautiful leather hand-tooled handbag. And it is marked Casa Zia Juarez, I think is how you say it, uh, Mexico. And um, Casa Zia has been around since 1934 in Mexico, and it was closed in the 80s. It was um, located across the border of um, El Paso, Texas. And back in the day, it was considered one of the finest leather shops um in that area uh they did um they created handmade saddles bridles holsters gun belts knife sheaths bull whips rifle scabbards scabbards i think is how you say it but they also made handbags they made hats they made saddlebags they made Western wear. So think of vests, chaps, boots, of course, and um, riding equipment. So yeah, it closed in the 80s. There's no way um, anyone was able to go there. Uh, during that time that there was a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, crime. Yeah, but 
finding this, I was totally thrilled. And looking at this, it is pretty spectacular. Looking at it close, look at this tooling. All that detail. Picture someone sitting there just hammering away. It has brass tone hardware. It measures, this measures uh, 12 inches across here. The height of this is eight inches high and um, the diameter is, oh, I would say almost, almost approximately, you know, it's about five inches. So approximately five inches. The drop on the handle from here to here is about four and a half, four and a half inches. And this is a very structured bag. So as you can tell, the leather is beautiful. It has that aged patina. I'm just looking at this design. It's basically, um, it looks like roses and leaves and it continues on the top. And here's the side. I guess it needs a little conditioning. This is the back. <sighs> and here's the other side. This is in awesome condition. And let's, uh, even the handles, look at the handles. So it is a turn lock with that. And when I open it, this is leather. It's quite stiff, but it does have, it, I guess through use, it will soften up. And here is the inside. Oh, wow. It is leather inside completely. You have a slip pocket and it feels like suede in here. You have a slip pocket that is uh, in the front. And here is the interior. Look how clean that is. Then you have a zippered center pocket, which is suede inside. Heavy duty. Then you have another section, which is super clean. And this is leather. It is soft leather. Uh, another slip pocket on on the back. So three compartments, two slip pockets on either side with a zippered uh, compartment in the center. Beautiful, beautiful bag that um, is vintage and from Casa Zia. Next up, I found some tote bags, and the first one here is by Hollister, California. It is a hot pink. It is this beautiful, soft, it almost feels like corduroy, uh, um, but it's a combed cotton, I believe, and it's a tote that measures approximately 16 inches across and... 15 inches high. Let's see. The diameter is about four inches. And then the handles, the handles have a drop of, a, mm, let's see. I would say that's approximately seven and a half inches. So let's take a look. Pacific Merchants Hollister. You have that logo all over the bag. Let's look at the corners. Okay, there's some there's some marks there. I think this bag needs to be um, cleaned. That's all. 
Let's look at the other side. The other side is plain, but it is in good condition. Let's see, any marks here? Not that I can see offhand. Oh, okay, there's a mark right there, as well as here. Looking at the handles, they look to be in nice condition. I don't see any tears. Now let's look at the inside. The inside has a slip pocket and, you know, I could just turn it inside out. Let's do it that way. So you can see whether or not there are any uh, stains. So here is the interior and it looks to be good. Here is the label and it is Unlegible. Okay. Let's see what it says on the other side. <laughs> uh, okay. Abro Abro Abercrombie and Fitch. Spot clean. Well, there's a lot written here. <laughs> Okay, so here is the interior, and here's the other side, and it looks to be in good condition inside out, uh, with the exception of those um, minor marks on the outside. So let's flip it back, and we have this tote by Hollister. There you go. The um, next tote that I have is a, as you can see, there is the logo. It's a Harajuku Lover's Tote Bag. And this is um, the Gwen Stefani one, which is called The Fatal Attraction to Cuteness. This one here, it is um, plastic like a vinyl, I guess. Uh, this tote measures 11 inches wide. It is six inches in diameter. And the height of it is about 13 inches. The drop, there are these canvas handles. As you can see, it says Harajuku. Juku lovers on the handle with the hearts this has a nine inch drop um there's this little squishy keychain i don't know if it came with it but it's attached so it comes with that i guess the colors do match the design and there's all this like a uh, circles of kind of like graffiti that says fatal attraction to cuteness Harajuku lovers and that's all over the bag um, I have to say uh, there is some marks on the bottom yeah this is the bottom and I guess it needs to be scrubbed because perhaps this person placed this bag on the floor can you see all those marks there are marks yeah on the bottom but let's see if there's any on the bag. Uh, yeah, a couple right there. Let's look at it. Mm, I don't see anything up here. Let's turn it around. And it looks okay. Oh, a mark here. There are pockets, I think. Is that a pocket? Yeah. There's pockets on the outside, too. And they are... They have Velcro. And I think... Yeah, it's on both sides. And this is um the bottom portion. So, yeah, it needs to be scrubbed. 
This bag was loved. And here are the handles in this green color, I guess. So let's uh, let's open it. There is a magnetic snap. Oh, look at this pattern inside. Let's show you what the inside looks like. Wow, the inside is really clean. And there's no pockets or anything. It is, oh, I take that back. There is a zippered pocket right here. And there it is. Um, there's a mark right there inside the pocket. The zipper look works great. And there is the interior, like I said, and it looks pretty good. Oh, is that a mark? I think I, think I saw a mark down there. Um, here's a tag. Uh, 100% polyester, exclusive of trim and lining. Okay. And I saw a tag on this side. Oh, okay. This is a, their tag. And yeah, the inside looks great. It's the outside that needs to be uh, cleaned. So we have this one, the Gwen Stefani Fatal Attraction to Cuteness tote bag by Harajuku Lovers. Moving on, um, I found some vintage handbags and I wanted to show you these two ads and they are for the Dover Handbag Company. The ad on the left is from January of 1954. Uh, Dover Handbag Company is located in Manhattan, New York City on West 33rd Street. Of course, they are no longer there, unfortunately. But their logo was where high style meets low price. And the ad on the left shows these really sweet handbags. Uh, pearl trimmed for that Dover touch of high style. Uh, it is mother of pearl, plastic trim on gold metal frame, a Dover innovation from a original Italian design. Uh, they made them in what they would call plastic calf, plastic patten, and something called fi fillet, F-A-I-L-L-E. And it came in a variety of um, different shades. And I remember my mom having the one on the right. And they retailed at about $3. Now, the one on the right, that bag I would have bought in a minute. Um, that is also retailed at $3. I love their ad. It says, fashion flashes its spotlight on another Dover handbag. Hit! As you can see, the spotlight is on the bag. Cute little marketing uh, slogan, I guess. And um, let me show you the Dover bag that I found. Okay, now that you learned a bit about the company Dover handbag, here is the purse I found. Um, it is fabric. And it measures about 11 inches wide, about five and a half inches high. The diameter is about three inches. And it has this beautiful glass bead strap. faceted beads. It's just so unique. And there's this embellishment and they kind of remind me of um, those clip earrings that we always run across. But I think there was a third one and it's missing from the bottom because I do see some glue residue. So 
either clean the glue off and leave it with two or even add another one uh, of your own just to uh, customize it a bit. This here is pretty, pretty spectacular. Um, there is some marks on the backside and somewhere on the corners. There's the bottom. And let me show you the inside. It does have this type of closure where uh, this is all brass and it just snaps like so. And you open it by pushing the lever back. And here's the inside. The construction. So nice. And here is a zipper pocket. The zipper works fine. There are some thread, like frayed thread, that you can trim. And uh, there is the signature. Quite faded, but it's there. Dover, made in USA. So, we have this bag. And I love the color of these glass beads. That rich, like ruby red color, along with the black. That's even has a round bead and the little uh, black seed bead spacers. So we have this beautiful vintage bag by by Dover. The next uh, vintage handbag company I wanted to talk about is Lewis Purses. They're also known as Crown Lewis. Um, founded sometime in the 30s and they lasted till the 60s. Uh, they are known for high-end handbags that were sold in high-end department stores such as um, hmm, Saks Fifth Avenue. And it was founded by Nat Lewis in New York City. Initially headquartered on Madison Avenue, he uh, eventually opened another headquarter on the West Coast in Los Angeles. Now, the exact year the company was formed is unknown, but the first ad was dated uh, 1936, and um, they are also known for ad adding monograms to ladies' handbags, and they used... Um, soft reptile skins and leather linings. Sometimes there would be a small mirror with the trademark of the gold crown uh, above the, the Lewis, just like you see in this ad um, within. Now this ad is from 1948. And as you can see, it is a, a nice evening bag and it is monogrammed, I guess with the the person's name and you can see the nameplate says Wendy Lynn. So let me show you what purse I found. This is the evening bag that I found uh, by Crown Lewis. It feels like a, a wool material, has this great tassel feature. It is nine inches wide at the widest, which is the bottom, and it's nine inches high. The drop of the strap is about five and a half inches long, and I would say the width is about two inches. Now, okay, mind you, it's wool. It needs, um, I guess, a, a good lint brush, but I couldn't believe I found a Crown Lewis that's still in pretty amazing condition. So the interior, as you can see, has this satin lining. It has this 
total, I, I believe it's brass hardware. Uh, and the top has this lever that you push up and it opens. Here's this beautiful lining. There is the zippered pocket with the little ring. Let's open that. Works nice. There is a slip pocket here. And then beneath that is a slot, kind of like a, yeah, it's, it's, it's longer than a card slot, but it has that beautiful, let's see if I could open this wider. Yeah, there you go. Well, little dusty. You know what? There's even another slot. Oh, can you see that? Okay. We're focused. And there you see the Lewis logo with the gold tone crown. There are two slots underneath the zippered pocket. So you have this one here, and then you have a, another one right there. And it's hinged, so this does open wider. And there you see the interior, which is pretty, pretty nice considering the age of this purse snapped very securely this flap goes right across let's look at the sides there is some wear on this as well as a scratch on the other side too you have this um textured screw there on either side and Let's look at the back. Here's the back. And let's look at the corners. You know, they look good. There is no, you know, when I think of this being so old and being like a wool fabric, there's no, like, I picture it being moth eaten, <laughs> but no. This was kept in a really nice condition. The strap looks great too. Like I said, it just needs to be, uh, there's a lot of fuzzies. So yeah, I think this is really sweet. I love the fringes. So we have this beautiful vintage purse by what is it lewis lewis purses also known as crown lewis hey everyone i think i'm gonna wrap up this video at this point uh even though i do have some more handbags and other items that i got from savers i will continue that on another video i hope you enjoyed this one if you did, please give me that thumbs up and comment below. Tell me, have any favorites? What's your, what's your thoughts? You think I did well um, from my trip to Savers? And um, if there's anything you would like to purchase, email me at dragonflybees at gmail.com. The instructions are below in the description box, and I also place them at the end of the video. Now, please note... Um, with handbags, the prices did not include shipping, and I will do my best to find the least expensive uh, route to go when it comes to shipping handbags. So I will either uh, look at USPS or UPS, or depending on uh, the most economic cost to you. Now... I know USPS is um, still on their holiday shipping rate, which uh, increased the regular rate by um, a little bit. And that is still going on until the end of January. So uh, just so you know. <laughs> and um, what else? Oh, jewelry. Jewelry is shipped. Um, that has a $5 flat fee rate of anything uh, under one pound. 
But um, sure, we can combine everything. If you do pick a piece of jewelry and a handbag. Um, so if anything sells, I do create a sold list and that's going to be pinned in the comment section. That means it's the first comment that you see. Uh, talking about comments, please comment. <laughs> Tell me what you think. Um, do you go to your savers in your area or uh, value village? I think it's also known as, um, do you find things there as well that you feel are th uh, good in value? I have not been to savers in a while and, um, I'm pretty uh, happy with my visit this time. So like I said, there's more handbags that will be continued on in another video. In the meantime, uh, Please subscribe if you haven't already, uh, ring that bell, choose all notifications, and I will see you real soon in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.